backstage, backstage, uh, talking about how normally we would be doing this in Austin, Texas. Um, we're very happy to be in Michigan, in many different parts of Michigan right now. Uh, my name is Ted Bealey, one of the co-founders of Michigan House. Uh, I'm going to get out of the way here, but I, I want to introduce um, uh, this, this panel and the Lieutenant Governor, who's going to be talking a little bit about town attraction in the state of Michigan. Um, and first, I'm going to introduce Ann Partington from uh, Ann Arbor Spark, who's going to take over from here. Um, Ann, you're, you're in charge. Thanks, Ted. Hi, everyone. I'm Ann Partington, Director of Entrepreneurial Services and DEI Lead at Ann Arbor Spark. And at this time, it is my great honor to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Garland Gilchrist, for some opening remarks. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much for uh, having me here today. And everyone, welcome to Michigan House. It's good to uh, have everybody here and get a little bit of piece of Michigan during this South By experience. Um, I miss South By, somebody who's participated in interactive a bunch of times. And so I'm looking forward to be able to have that. And we can have our physical Michigan house back. Um, but today, I just wanted to uh, share some thoughts and, and thank my panelists, co-panelists here um, about a talent attraction. I mean, talent is like, from my, from my estimation, the most important um, element of any uh, just like culture of creativity, culture of entrepreneurship, uh, culture of growth and culture of opportunity. And I mean that from the perspective that um, we have a responsibility, I think, as a state and as a collection of communities to cultivate the talent that, that exists within us, that's sort of the talent that's born here, and then also make our, our spaces welcoming to talent um, from anywhere and everywhere that we can make our soil fertile, fertile ground for anyone who has an idea to plant that idea within and for it to have the potential to grow. And this is very personal to me as someone who grew up, I was born in the city of Detroit. I spent the first half of my childhood in the city, moved to the suburbs of Detroit for the second half. I'm a double engineering uh, alum of the University of Michigan College of Engineering. I was a software developer. And actually, you know, back in 2005 when I graduated, I thought I needed to go somewhere else to be a software developer, at least the type of developer that I wanted to be. So I, I left the state of Michigan, the state that made me who I was, that bore and bred me, um, because I thought I needed to go someplace else to be the professional that I dreamed of being. I went to the West Coast. I lived in Seattle for four years as a software developer at Microsoft. I then decided, crazily enough, I was going to leave technology. I got into community organizing. I started working in progressive politics. So I moved to the other coast, to Washington, D.C. I lived there for five years doing community organizing and social justice work before ultimately coming home nine years later in 2014. The reason I came home um, was not due to some tragedy not because I had to, though, it's because I wanted to. It's because I saw Michigan as the best place uh, to build my family and build my future. And so my wife and our twin babies at the time, uh, we drove back home to Michigan. And the question is, you know, why did I feel that way? Or why should someone um, consider Michigan as the place, again, to plant that seed and grow their idea? Um, I think it's because, you know, first of all, we've been a place that has done this historically in world-changing ways. Um, across industries, everyone or a lot of people are familiar with our history, certainly in the mobility and automotive space, how we really sort of define that for like more than 100 years. Um, but it really goes beyond that. Just the type of um, the type of creativity that's come from all parts of the state of Michigan have been ones that have been culture defining as well as industry defining um, going forward. And I think what we're representing here at Michigan House is first of all, the breadth of opportunity that exists in our state and how that opportunity can really be a magnet um, for people to either come to a different part of the state when they're already there or to come to the state uh, for the first time to make something happen. Because the truth is, if you've ever spent more than a few minutes with somebody from Michigan, you've picked up the fact that we're really proud of it. Like we are really proud to be from Michigan. If you're in, if you're in an airport, you see somebody with a tiger's hat, or I went to Michigan, so like a block M <laughs> on, on their clothes, that's a conversation that is ready to happen. And we, we just because we love our state and we love the people of our state, and we love the possibility and potential that exists in every one of those people. And it's my job as a public servant you know, to create the conditions for success to be accessible to people in the state of Michigan. We have a great array, a great network of resources and people who are hungry to provide the support to people with ideas. And a lot of those elements of our economy and our economic infrastructure are represented on this panel. Um, when that those are supported by private institutions, public private partnerships and public institutions. We really think we have to do a full court press and have all hands on deck to make sure that we can um, have people 
see a pathway to realizing their dreams and their potential from an economic, business, and social perspective um, here in our state. And so whether it's um, the partners who helped make Michigan House possible, like the Michigan Film and the Digital Media Office, part of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Traverse Connect, um, and the other partners that, that brought this to bear, or just so many other organizations that I know will be represented in other conversations that are happening throughout the, the, um, the festival, um, I really hope folks will take a chance to not only hear about what's going on in Michigan, but that everyone who does then goes and is an ambassador for um, what's possible in the state of Michigan. I think we do have some opportunities that are presented to us um, as we begin to emerge from the realities of this COVID-19 pandemic. Michigan was a state that was hit really hard, but we were also one of the more proactive states in terms of addressing public health, in terms of reducing racial disparities, and in terms of providing economic support for the survival, recovery, and ultimate growth of small businesses in our state. And we also had carve outs specifically for businesses that were in the creative industries. We can because we recognize that uh, the creative industry is industry that matters to the growth and to the attractiveness of our state for talented people to wanna to come and grow their families. And so we tried to make that accessible to communities across the state. We've worked really hard at the state level to make sure our relief programs are complementary to federal programs, that they fill in gaps that federal programs may have missed so that we can have better coverage of our people in our state, whether that's for businesses that are, you know, very, very small, five or fewer employees, businesses that are in industries that may not have been part of um, federal programs such as PPP uh, and the emergency, uh, emergency disaster loans that were coming from SBA and things like that. So um, we have a lot of assets that I think we're going to be able to build on. I think Michigan can be a state that will benefit from the fact that there will be a greater cultural remote working post pandemic. Michigan is a great place to come and live. It's beautiful. And I'm working to make sure we have internet everywhere that's really fast. <laughs> that is one of my that is one of my priorities as LG. I want the state of Michigan to be the first state to connect all of its people. And we are on the cusp of making some pretty ambitious announcements in partnership with the uh, the FCC and the Biden Harris administration about how we want to move forward as being the state that connects our people. We want to solve the access challenges that may exist in rural areas. We want to solve affordability challenges that may exist in urban, suburban, and rural areas. And we want to provide access to digital literacy um, experiences for people of all ages and all walks of life in every corner of the state of Michigan so that once you have access to the internet and you can afford it, you can fully enjoy it and take full advantage of it. So um, this is something that's really important. I'll mention a couple of uh, locales before turning back over so we can get back to a little more interesting part of the conversation. Um, but just want folks to know that in terms of the regions of our state that are not only well known to Michiganders, well known to some folks in the country, but that have also been well ranked and are competitive when it comes to being a place uh, to live, to work, and to grow. Um, certainly the city of Detroit, where I live and I'm speaking to you from right now, and the city of Grand Rapids, our second largest city, continue to rank among the top 10 regions for housing affordability internationally, not just in Michigan. And as someone who lived in Seattle and Washington, DC, it's not as expensive. I can tell you that, <laughs> full fact. Um, Wallet Hub ranked Ann Arbor, Michigan as the most educated city in America in 2020. And that actually um, ties into the fact that the Southeast Michigan region um, has the highest concentration of engineers uh, in the country. And so um, some of that has to do with our, our deep engineering and product engineering heritage. Um, but there is a lot of talent um, and educated talent that is available to people and businesses in the state of Michigan. And then something else is that the state of Michigan, uh, we are the Great Lakes state. We are actually surrounded by 20% of the surface fresh water in the world. And we are home to more than 11,000 inland lakes, which is the most in the country. Um, and hundred public, hundreds of public beaches and golf courses and all this kind of stuff. My point is, there is so much beauty in our state that not only exists for recreation, not only exists for conservation, but I think exists for inspiration as well. And so coming and being there and having that relationship with um, the natural resources and beauty of our state, I think are things that have, have led and sparked ideas and innovation within people to create things, products, services, goods that are new, different, better, and more valuable to more people across industries, across pretty much any industry you can imagine. Um, last but not least, you know, as a, as a state government, we are working to double down on our investment in our people. Our people are our greatest resource here in Michigan. 
Um, that is why we've centered people in our COVID-19 response and we're centering people in our COVID-19 recovery. We have put forward programs um, and, and are funding programs such as the Michigan Reconnect program, which is providing a tuition-free pathway to all adult Michiganders over the age of 25 who want to pursue professional certification, training, or an associate's degree in an in-demand skill. We also are the only country in the, in the only state in the country that has put forward a program called Futures for Frontliners, which is again providing a tuition free pathway to the people who've been working every day to sustain life during the pandemic for them to choose, uh, you know, a skill or training or an associate's degree that they would like to pursue tuition free so that they can, you know, decide to take another to decide to deepen their experience in their particular profession or to change their career for the better. The state of Michigan is saying unapologetically that we're going to invest in our people. We have money for a program called Going Pro, which is supporting employer-based training grants for that kind of training um, and growth. And we also have made a, a big investment on apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship programs for the skilled trades, which often are partnering with creative and innovative companies around the state. So if I can just sum it up in one word, um, our approach to talent attraction is investment. It's investing in our people. It's investing in our infrastructure to support creative and innovative and inspired uh, people with ideas. And it's in making sure that the infrastructure um, that exists, whether it's physical infrastructure, virtual infrastructure, um, can support a high quality of life for those who choose to live and work in the state of Michigan. And so I'm excited to be committed to that work and leading that work alongside our fantastic governor, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, and we're gonna work to make create the conditions for success every single day in our state. So thank you for having me here to, uh, to, to speak to this group. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for kicking us off with those inspiring words. So at this time, I would like to introduce our panelists. Thank you so much for being here. They are Camille Hoisington, Director of Strategic Projects and Project Lead for Michigan's Creative Coast at Traverse Connect. Ryan Hunt, Regional Director, Growth and Development at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Tiffany McClyde Blythe, Associate Vice President, Human Resources at the Interlochen Center for the Arts, and Joe Teal, CEO of Innovate Marquette Smart Zone. Welcome to all of our panelists and thank you so much for being here. We'll start out by reiterating what the Lieutenant Governor said about Michigan being a great place to live because we all live and work here and we play here as well. The career outlook for Michigan through 2028 shows the demand not only in sort of the traditional spaces that we think of in Michigan, auto, high tech, mobility, but also in education, healthcare, trades, and many other areas at the, as the Lieutenant Governor stated. These jobs range from requiring shorter term certifications to degrees. What should people who are considering coming to Michigan know about the opportunities, the vast opportunities within the state? And then along with that, what can we share with people listening, considering coming to Michigan about the communities that they can live in, work in, and grow in? So why don't we start out with uh, Ryan? Ryan, could you start us off, please? Sure. Uh, thanks, Ann, and, and thanks to everybody joining us uh, today for this, uh, this virtual uh, event. Great to be here and, and be on this uh, wonderful panel. Um, you know, with regards to, to Michigan, the why it's such a great place to live, work, and play, I think the benefit of being in economic development and sort of the core of being an economic developer is that we are ambassadors for our communities and our state. And so being at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, I get to be an ambassador for the entire state of Michigan, uh, you know, in, in every corner of the state uh, from the largest cities to the smallest communities. But one thing you'll likely hear from any economic developer that you talk to all across the country, um, they'll say something like, you know, my town or fill in the blank is a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, but I do believe that is actually the case here in Michigan. And if we can break down each element of that phrase very quickly, we'll start with the living. And in terms of living here in Michigan, we have the fourth most affordable state in the nation uh, when taking into account the cost of living and housing affordability. It's about 10 to 11% lower than the national average for uh, living here in, uh, in the state of Michigan. The Lieutenant Governor mentioned a few select cities in Michigan that are lower in terms of housing affordability yet are experiencing exponential growth, places like Detroit and Grand Rapids. Additionally, places like Kalamazoo, you know, Kalamazoo was recently ranked as the eighth best city for high salaries and low cost of living in the Midwest. So your dollar goes further here in terms of living and affordability. In terms of working, it's a little known fact that Michigan ha actually has experienced and ranks third in the country over the past decade 
in job growth within the tech sector. We also have the highest concentration of engineers in the country. We continue to lead the world in manufacturing prowess. So there are job opportunities within these spaces and a number of other industries across the state that make uh, the state of Michigan dynamic and, and our work environment is particularly exceptional. And lastly, you know, once you've wrapped up the, the workday, you're gonna want to venture out into any one of our communities that offer an exceptional um, experience in terms of the play aspect of live, work and play. Again, the Lieutenant Governor mentioned access to our freshwater resources like the Great Lakes. We have over 3000 miles of shoreline, tons of adventure waiting for those who fancy themselves as outdoor, as outdoor enthusiasts in every season, uh, whether it's you know, winter sports from skiing and snowboarding to fishing in the summer, visiting one of our Great Lakes. Uh, we also have professional and college sports teams that compete at the highest levels. I'm not saying that the Lions are competitive, just that they do compete at the highest level of professional football a phenomenal craft beer scene in West Michigan. There's really something for everyone in all corners of the state of Michigan. Thank you, Ryan, for, for setting that nice broad perspective of the diversity and, and um, opportunities within the vast ecosystems Michigan hosts. So Joe, can we head over to you and, and Marquette and uh, can you provide your perspective? You bet. I think the innovation ecosystem in the state of Michigan is, is exceptional. Um, the MEDC and the innovation department within the MEDC has created a network of smart zones throughout the state. We have 21 smart zones here from Houghton to Marquette to Sault Ste. Marie, Traverse City, all the way down through uh, to, to Ann Arbor and, and, and Southern Michigan. And those are a very robust network of innovation ecosystems that work collaboratively together to really cultivate innovation within the state of Michigan. Um, one of the best in the country. I'm tying that all together into a statewide network where you can be innovative anywhere inside the state. You know, our offices, we take in hundreds of ideas per year and we have processes here to um, cultivate those ideas, turn those ideas into scalable businesses and, and give opportunities, um, especially with remote work and, and remote work attraction and, and, and the attraction of individuals from around the country to come into that ecosystem is a fantastic opportunity to where you may have thinking about thinking about something for a long time we really wanted to cultivate that idea, turn it into a real business, have you know, solid employees and scale that business. The network that MEDC has in the state of Michigan is just phenomenal for that. Um, and, and I think that tapping into that network as a young entrepreneur or a new business startup or even, a, even a, a, an advanced business, um, we see that um, in the whole entire state that, that just continuing to grow and blossom. Um, wonderful new startups and also accelerate and grow and scale and pivot um, a lot of existing businesses. So. One of the wonderful things about the state um, really is that innovation ecosystem. And I, I'm so happy to be a part of it um, here in Marquette and see that the, that growing and blossoming here and the support that we get from the state, not only at the state level, but also at the federal level um, in notifying us of all these grant programs and additional things coming for rural innovation and innovation and innovation opportunities at the federal level. We have this wonderful channel from the federal level all the way back down to the city of Marquette um, and, and, and be able to provide that um, throughout the state. I think. That's one of the biggest things um, right now that I would, that I would, that I would speak to on in, in terms of the opportunities here in the state of Michigan. Thanks, Joe. And, and I too express my gratitude in the collaboration and partnerships that we have across the state in our uh, smart zones. It, it is really incredible and such a great way to support our entrepreneurs. So Lieutenant Governor talked a lot about the creative space and uh, you know, the, the agility in that space and to foster that, that culture. And so I'd like to head over to Tiffany. Tiffany, could you speak to, to this aspect um, as well? Absolutely. Um, we're extremely fortunate for our area to consistently be on the SMU study for a top arts and creative space zone. And I think um, that bodes well, especially for our school since it's a creative art space, but just the variety of creative art discipline, location, music, um, arts, it's just extremely exciting to have all of those and what makes it even more um, astonishing is the fact that you can also pair that with outdoors. So generally speaking, for you to get a culture like that, you're normally in a large city or something else. Um, and that's not the case because Michigan just offers so much vari uh, variety um, for everybody in the area to be able to enjoy exactly what it is that you love, um, whether it's the arts, whether it's the outdoors, and just be able to participate in all of those, those pieces. So um, it's one of my favorite things to talk about when I'm 
um, recruiting people uh, to consider coming to, to Michigan and coming to our, our, our wonderful organization. Just look at all of the things that you're just not going to be able to experience anywhere else in the US. Thank you, Tiffany, and the contribution of, of the Interlochen Center um, for the Arts to the world and sharing of their you know, talents virtually has been really amazing. So keep up the great work. And so Camille, we come back to, to you now, um, and I'm just gonna reiterate the question, uh, which is, you know, what can we share with people coming to Michigan or considering coming to Michigan about the communities that they can live in, work and play, and of course, grow? Yeah, well, obviously it's no question that Michigan has a lot to offer, um, having heard what everyone has said thus far. Um, but speaking about my town, which is Traverse City and the Traverse City region specifically, um, or Michigan's Creative Coast as we're using as a place name brand, it's no secret that we have a lot to offer in terms of quality of life. We're frequently ranked nationally as among the best towns for livability, raising children. We're nationally recognized for being one of the most beautiful places in America. We have hundreds of miles of hiking trails, miles and miles of Lake Michigan shoreline. Um, so our tourism and, and hospitality industries boom here, as well as agriculture and the food scene, the culinary industry. Um, we have world-renowned vineyards, breweries, micro distilleries. So, but th there's also so much more layered on top of all that. We have this rich cultural and vibrant art scene. Um, as Tiffany said, Traverse City um, has been named twice in the past three years to the top 10 most arts vibrant medium communities on the National Arts Vibrancy Index. So we have this natural beauty, we have culture and the arts, but we also have, um, importantly, um, as Joe alluded to, the ingredients and support systems in place for this thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem for innovation for small business startups. Um, Traverse City was placed fourth, fourth on the 2019 list of most popular micropolitan areas for startups. And that's according to US Census Bureau data. Um, and we also have access to capital here for local startups. We have the Northern Michigan Angels, we have Boomerang Catapult, which is our local equity firm. Um, they've now collectively injected 11 million into over 35 local startups. And we have TC New Tech, which is our monthly tech meetup and pitch contest, which consistently attracts almost 300 attendees every month. Um, so we have all these key ingredients. And I know personally for me, um, I looked to all of these things when considering a move to Northern Michigan. Um, so my family and I, we relocated here two years ago to Traverse City after living in New York um, for a decade. And we looked for space. We looked for access to the great outdoors. We looked for culture and community. And we looked for the opportunity to grow our careers or um, in my husband's case, the ability to bring his career with him and then to work remotely. And so we had the opportunity in Michigan to buy our first house here. And our monthly mortgage payment is literally half of what our rent was in New York City. So we love it here. And I can say firsthand, coming from New York, um, where I was working with the startup network with accelerators and incubators there, um, there's, where there's really a strong thriving Silicon Alley, if you will, I see a huge potential for the growth of a, a thriving year round tech based economy, not just for Traverse City, um, but also this opportunity for Michigan to be the Midwest's tech hub. And I should add that there's there's other like cities um, like Traverse City and Michigan, they're doing equally great things to grow their economy. So I think this is a pattern and a trend that we're seeing form across the state of Michigan. Thank you, Camille. And uh, my family came here three decades ago for two years and we've never left. So <laughs> I can, uh... <laughs> I can uh, empathize with your story. So uh, for the next question, the market is showing that communities that are cultural hubs, as we discussed, that offer diversity in demographics, quality of life opportunities, natural beauty, et cetera, are highly sought after. Regional economic development agencies have the power to attract talent to your respective regions. While organizations or companies have the power to attract company based on their industry, their service, their reputation or culture, or even the proximity to a great place to live. What strategies or examples can you give that show how your organization recruits new talent to your region and to showcase the specific qualities of your region um, that showcase the specific qualities of your region to that prospective talent? So let's start with Joe. Great, thank you, Anne. 
um, right now our organization is working on a massive remote work initiative here in the UP. Um, right now we've seen record numbers in, in Munising and other areas around 1.2 million people last year came to Pitcher Rocks, it's highest in history. And that's during a COVID summer. Um, so we understand and we've seen through all of the campgrounds and all of our um, local areas for remote workers to, to be and, and to be here during those summer months, a huge opportunity for us to um, look to those remote workers and retain the remote workers. Majority of our um, assets are in outdoor recreation. You know, we have thousands of miles of trails. Um, we have a wonderful outdoor recreational locations throughout the city. We really leverage those um, to attract those remote workers. The key to that is once you've attracted the remote workers to the area, how do you retain them, right? And so there's many issues that go along with retention of those remote workers in terms of you know, trailing spouses and, and, and job opportunities. Um, so creating a really solid job opportunity base, creating um, quick turn academic studies to help um, trailing spouses or, or others, uh, remote workers to be able to pivot in their, in their careers to, um, you know, to be more attractive for remote work opportunities, um, working with Michigan Works and, uh, having, and, and working closely with them. There's over 20 organizations in our local area, economic development organizations and other organizations um, working collaboratively on this effort um, since July. And I think this summer we'll see another huge spike in, in the remote workforce that's here. And we have an attraction um, campaign that we're launching now to be ready for that. And as a community, um, you know, accepting all of that. Other, other you know, things in there is you can talk about workforce and, and when you have um, as many small mom and pop shops and, and different um, restaurants in our local area, we really need to be able to staff those adequately as well to really handle um, all of this influx. Um, so we've done, a, I think we've done a really good job working with the local community here um, to ensure that, the, that those, um, you know, those locations are up and ready to go. Um, for this opportunity, and, and we're ready to um, attract and retain um, probably one of the largest influx of, of remote workforce we've seen in the history of Marquette in our local region. Thank you, Joe. Camille, can you share some of the tactics that are used to attract and retain talent in the Traverse region? Yes. Um, Okay, well, so you heard me talk about all these key ingredients that we have here in the Grand Traverse region. Um, you know, all the great reasons it's it's a great place to live and have a career. It's the natural beauty, the outdoor recreation, the arts and culture, our food scene, um, our thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem. But the question for us has been, how do we package all of that up, spread the word about our region, and then get the word out to prospective newcomers and new talent? So we were very lucky at Traverse Cadet that in early 2020, we received some generous grant funding from the Michigan Film and Digital Media Office at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Um, and that grant funding, it supported our efforts to not only enhance our existing creative and cultural assets, but also to advance our economic development programs toward attracting talent to our region. Um, so that funding kickstarted the build out of our dedicated talent attraction website, which is michigan'screativecoast.com. And that website is intended to be a newcomer's guide, a one-stop shop for moving to Traverse City. Um, and in addition, our, attention, our intention with this website is to brand and market our region, the Grand Traverse region as Michigan's creative coast. So that's one of our tactics. Um, the creative in Creative Coast, it's intended to inspire innovation, the entrepreneurial mindset, the families seeking a higher quality of life, these digital nomads um, who can live anywhere, the remote workers. Um, you can create this very good life here and we want people to make this place their home. So by giving our region a, a name or a brand, it's a place making, making tactic for the Traverse City area. Um, and just to go a little bit deeper on that um, and to give a bit of context, so our region, the Grand Traverse region, it's actually gaining population overall, but we're losing people of key working age over the last few years. And those are the people that are prime, they're mid-career experienced workers. Um, that demographic is really the 25 to 39 year old demographic right now. They're millennials. And we know that millennials, they're attracted to experience and to place um, very often over a job or career first and foremost. So they're looking for these vibrant cultural economies for um, vibrant downtown areas and access to the outdoors. So michiganscreativecoast.com, uh, this website, it covers all these aspects of the live and the play, as well as the work element, elements of the Grand Traverse region. It highlights year-round careers. Um, we showcase company profile pages. We have a job board, which is curated to showcase local employment opportunities, which offer family sustaining wages and meet certain salary and pay rate um, parameters. 
So the whole design of the website, it's very much designed with this millennial eye in mind, the, the demographic that we need to grow and attract here. So it's very image forward. It's beautiful imagery at that. It's not too much text. We use video shorts as a, as a tool as well. And so to coincide with the launch of that talent attraction website, um, a tactic we, we used was we simultaneously launched a nationwide digital marketing campaign. And that advertising campaign, it's currently being played out over social media, um, the Google display and search network. And like I mentioned, we're using these promotional video shorts as a tool as well. So these videos capture um, real life testimonials from people who've made the move from big cities, who now work remotely, who started their own companies, so all of our marketing efforts point our audience to our talent attraction website. Um, and we're being very intentional with that marketing too, in terms of uh, geographically speaking, we're seeing a trend. People are leaving the East and West coasts. Um, those are the big, the states with the big tech hub cities like New York, San Francisco. Um, so we're being very intentional in that geographic marketing, but also the, the demographic age range um, that I mentioned. So all that is to say, um, our tactic is that we we build a brand and an ad campaign. We have a website that gives the newcomer this information that they need to know about living and working here. And now we're harnessing the power of digital media to get the word out to the right audience. Thank you, Camille. Tiffany, do you have anything to add from a regional perspective since we're up in the Traverse area right now? Absolutely. Um, this part is actually my favorite because I'm in human resources. So who, uh, what employer doesn't like trying to attract the best talent uh, to come to their organization? I've been very fortunate to be in, the, in this regional area. The programs that Camille is working on, um, our organization has absolutely been a benefit of it. I find our organization has a really unique um, a really unique opportunity. I mean, we are bringing some of the best students across the world, um, not just the US, but we, we have students from other countries that come here for their creative arts to grow and fo uh, foster and bloom. And that story in and of itself brings people here because they want that opportunity. Um, you can't you don't necessarily always go to work with people that are going to be featured Grammy stars um, or nominees and, and everything else. So we have that benefit in the way that we message, but very fortunate that the other message that's equally important as employers for us to do is build the case on why this is the best place for you to have, to have the total package on you work and do what you love and you live in an area that you love and you can do everything as well. Um, and that's what my responsibility is, um, attracting people, is to sell them on, here's the great impact that you can make at, in your career, but here are all of the wonderful opportunities that you have for yourself, for your family, when you decide to make a change and come and live in this area. You have access to all of these great things. You have this environment that is world-class and like nothing else. Check out all of these local favorites with sleeping, uh, sleeping uh, bear dunes and all of these other items. Most states can't compete with that. And it's a really great, uh, it's a really great selling point when you're trying to paint a holistic picture for people on what their life can look like. Thank you, Tiffany. And that walk across the National um, Lake Shore, Sleeping Dune, Bear Dunes is a tough one, but incredible, especially when you get to the end. And you know, I have a picture of the pictured rocks up here on my bulletin board, and it looks like you're in, in the Caribbean and even more fantastic. And yet it's just a few hours away. So you're right, highlighting those are um, really nice ways to introduce people to our state. So Ryan, people have shared, you know, so many different exciting opportunities and qualities about the reg their regions. Um, can you sum this up for us? Yeah, I think, you know, talent attraction uh, for many folks and in many ways starts with an experience. And I think we can all, uh, we can all probably say or, or look back on a vacation we took uh, to another part of the country or another part of the world. And when you get back home, you're like, I wonder what it would be like to, to live there. And so, you know, I, we go on Google and we look up jobs in location X, Y, or Z, or, you know, living costs in, in location X, Y, or Z, something along those lines. And I think Michigan benefits in large part uh, to a very well known, you know, internationally recognized tourism campaign, which is Pure Michigan. And you, you see it everywhere. It's, it's right here on my screen above me. It's on our business cards at the MEDC. We have the, uh, the radio campaigns and the TV ad campaigns. 
that go out annually all across the country. It's no doubt, you know, the best known campaign here in Michigan. And it's, it is consumer facing, so it is a leisure travel campaign effort, but it's also very much a part of our economic development efforts as well, particularly when it comes to conversations around talent retention and attraction. So ultimately through this focus on marketing the state, we're responsible for increasing both the awareness and consideration of Michigan, whether that's a site selector looking for the best site for a corporate expansion, a CEO in Michigan looking to grow business opportunities in the state, maybe a traveler planning their next uh, vacation, or someone looking for the next career opportunity, which I think ultimately is what this group is hoping to accomplish. Thank you, Ryan. So for our next question, we're going to explore the opportunities a little bit. And Joe, actually, you talked about this in the previous question. The pandemic has demonstrated that many types of jobs, uh, including not only high tech and STEM jobs, but also government, educational institutions, and any job that really could be information or analytics based, can be sustained and executed remotely as it has been demonstrated for the last year um, successfully for quite a period of time. Uh, attracting work, remote workers to Michigan you know, is a topic that is being explored across organizations and in the private and public sector. And what are some discussions in your organizations around opportunities for remote workers, but also how to serve our customers remotely? And, um, and then there's a second part to that question. So why don't we explore that first part? You know, what are the ongoing discussions in your organizations around opportunities for remote workers? That could be from the employer side, that could also be for employees who have the skills to work remotely. And also, you know, how do we serve our customers uh, remotely as well? So Joe, I'm just gonna come back to you since you already sort of touched on this topic. Great. Well, we've, we've been working remotely, obviously, since the pandemic began. So we're serving our customers. The neat thing about working remotely is it really opens up your schedule. You know, we had this nine to five kind of office mindset um, to where a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they don't work in that space. You know, so there's a lot of evening hours and, and other, other times throughout the day and weekends where we can be more agile in our work schedule um, to be able to help support those entrepreneurs and, and do that from, a, from our perspective. Um, one thing really wonderful here in Marquette and Northern Michigan University has a cybersecurity institute. Um, the cybersecurity institute at Northern Michigan University is, um, you know, turning out amazing um, workforce in that space. So I think the cybersecurity opportunity um, for remote work and for also um, talent attraction and, and opportunities for remote workers to be here is a huge opportunity that we have here. And I think many of the universities um, here in the UP and throughout Michigan are also have these really um, great opportunities uh, for people and students. Um, we've had a, a, a number of um, pandemic um, displaced uh, folks around the area um, who have gone through the Cybersecurity Institute at Northern Michigan University and really uh, benefit from that and, and turn into a high uh, paying tech job. Um, we have other opportunities um, throughout the area here, same thing. Um, so really being able to you know, modify our mindsets to be able to really support those entrepreneurs much better and, and adjust our schedules being remote, being remote workers, as well as really looking for opportunities in workforce redevelopment. Um, you know, for, for those pandemic displaced individuals and also um, remote work opportunities within the universities here have been very successful for us. Thanks, Joe. And uh, let's head back to Ryan. Yeah, so I, I think what we're seeing is some of these discussions, um, as Joe had mentioned and others will probably attest to, is that uh, these discussions have started to turn into action really for a handful of of regional economic development partners here in Michigan. For example, Cornerstone Alliance in Southwest Michigan, not too far away from the Chicago market, they launched the Move to Michigan campaign at the end of 2020. And what that program does is it offers up to $15,000 in grants to help individuals and their families purchase a home in Southwest Michigan. And within the first week of that program, they received over 200 applications from all over the country. Around the same time, another economic development organization in Southwest Michigan, Battle Creek Unlimited, they launched their train incentive, which stands for talent retention, attraction and inclusion. And that program provides $12,000 towards down payment on a new home, rent costs or moving expenses. So now with people having that flexibility to work remotely, you know, anywhere uh, across the country, really across the world, like never before, within economic development for years and years, we've heard that companies, uh, you know, their number one barrier to growth oftentimes is is talent, it's people. And so what these organizations in economic development are trying to solve for now um, is, that, is that talent component. And it's why you know, certain states in the country 
right now their chambers of commerce are saying that one of their top legislative priorities for calendar year 2021 and beyond is to increase the number of incentives financially for remote workers. And I think what we're going to see over the next several months into um, the next few years is a hyper competitive space, not just for business investment and business attraction, but also talent attraction and remote workers in particular. Thank you, Ryan. Tiffany, would you like to provide your perspective? Um, it's been really interesting for, for us at interlocking um, with, the, with the change of the pandemic. And, you know, typically we have all of these concerts and all of these great events for community members and, and our family to be able to come and, and see our students and other artists perform. Um, it's been interesting trying to change and adapt to that landscape. And if, as I reflect on kind of our last year, you know, for nearly a hundred years, we've been bringing people here into our local community between the two lakes. We have two lakes on our campus is one of the things that we, we love to brag on and talk about. And um, we've been bringing thousands of people here for nearly a hundred years for them to be able to, to, to see and experience the art. And then in the last year, what we've basically did is the complete opposite. We're, we're now having thousands of people across the, the world in, in their own homes now participating and being able to participate in our virtual events that we've been able to put on as an organization and all of our student performances and concerts and even just the way that our students handled the nutcracker um, when we basically closed all of the schools down towards the end of the year. Um, so we've been really fortunate um, to have that that role reversal. And we've also been really fortunate to just be able to explore and see how, um, you know, most people remote work, that was kind of a, ooh, I don't wanna, wanna do that. And COVID-19 has just really opened up the opportunity for a lot of businesses to work and, and, and basically do what they do best in a whole new way that they probably weren't open to before. So we've just been extremely fortunate related to that. Um, and, and just how we continue to have our mission now, instead of it coming here, uh, having it go out the opposite way um, because of COVID restrictions. You're, you're so correct, Tiffany. And it just seems like, you know, because of the pandemic, the whole world and so many industries have proved that they can be sustainable and successful, you know, globally through virtual work. Um, and, and yet there are many critical workers that we wanna give a shout out to that are essential and have had to be in person, including in the manufacturing and healthcare sector. So um, that has been a very interesting experience seeing how in the course of a few weeks, companies managed to you know, go to 100% remote and successfully execute their businesses. So Camille, we come back to you. Uh, would you like to discuss, um, you know, what are the opportunities for remote workers in your region and, um, and how, how can you, um, what would you like them to know about those opportunities? Yeah, um, you're right. This is a huge opportunity for us. Um, and we really recognize that this is this pivotal moment um, to attract people who've made the decision to relocate from the big cities. Um, and that's, that's being spurred on, obviously, by COVID-19. Um, so United Van Lines, the moving company, um, they've been tracking the top 10 inbound states for movers. So movers who are spurred on by the pandemic and this desire for more space, um, as well as the newfound ability to work remotely. Um, so Michigan actually ranks number five in these top 10 inbound state, states, which is great news for us. Um, we recognize that remote workers are this almost like a low hanging fruit um, in terms of talent attraction for us. So um, at Michigan's Creative Coast, we're, we're de we've developed a web page dedicated to the remote workers who want to make this place their home. Um, and our local business incubator, 20 Fathoms, um, is developing a remote workers community, which we know is also key to their success. Um, and one thing that I think that is worth bringing up in this discussion about remote workers is why attract remote workers specifically? What's the benefit of that? Um, and we've looked into this a little bit and remote workers can bring many benefits to the community they choose to live in. So um, just like any other resident, they spend their money locally. Um, they're growing the tax base. They're filing their income taxes to their state of residence. Um, 
the majority of remote workers are, they tend to be young professionals with young families. So they bring their significant other with them, which equals more talent for our local businesses. And they bring their children, which is beneficial to our school systems. Um, and so finally, there's also this hope that remote workers may transition to local employment or start their own companies. Um, we recently sent out a survey to our existing remote tech workers in Traverse City. We did this in partnership with 20 Fathoms. Um, interestingly, almost 20% of the respondents say they would like to transition to local employment in the future. So um, that's good news for us. Um, and also, as we've said, many remote workers, they work in tech. Um, they may have a side hustle. So they're essentially these mobile entrepreneurs. And the hope is that they, they eventually start their own companies locally and thus creating more jobs. Thank you, Camille. And I also would like to just let our audience know if you have any questions, please drop them into the chat. Um, we will be monitoring and we will try to get to as many as we can before the end. Uh, one last question to encourage this creativity, innovation, inclusiveness. We uh, have to create communities where diverse talent and downtown businesses can thrive and, and strive and, and thrive. And can you provide an example of how your organization welcomes new talent, uh, both locally and regionally? And uh, Tiffany, why don't we start with you? Well, thank you. Um, so for us, uh, welcoming talent is, is a really important thing to do. Uh, once somebody has made the investment that um, your organization is now their, their new home, you want to make sure that they have a really great experience. So um, we have designed and, and are in the process of still upgrading our onboarding process so that when uh, our onboarding and recruitment process. So the goal is before they get here, we want them extremely excited about like where they're going to live. So they can see themselves living here. They're already starting to think about what fun activities they're gonna do as soon as they get here. We're pumping them with all of this information about here's all the great restaurants for you to visit and the wineries and the breweries. And let's just give you a really long list. You can work all year long to try to knock everything off um, when, when you're not working. So we want to give them all of this great information. So as they're getting adjusted, they're already thinking about how am I taking care of my personal time and having fun um, when I'm not at work. And then when we bring them on, we want to make sure that they have a really great experience. We want to make sure that they have connections to all of the resources that they need, that they understand who they can connect to, um, especially if they're talent from a different area. We want to make sure that they have connections and that they have people, because the more your employees set roots, especially if they're transitioning from a different area, the more they become a part of the community and the longer that they stay. When they're unable to establish those roots, it makes it really easy easy when they feel disconnected or they feel like they don't belong for them to go, oh, maybe I need to move back home or, oh, I need to move back to another location. So our, our goal is in that onboarding process is to connect them with, a, with as many different community partners, organizations, people that have like interests so that they're setting those roots and they become a part of the community because that means more volunteers, that means more money spent, that means friends and family come up and visit. So we want to make sure that they're experienced experience leads them to be able to do all of those things. Um, and we're also really fortunate that our, our area, actually, even with, with Traverse Connect, we have a diversity, inclusion, and belonging committee for our, our area. So we're actively talking about all of the different ways to make people feel like once they're in our area, I belong here. That, that's ultimately what we want for our employees. When they get here, when you find them, when they're the best, they need to feel like they belong here. They need to feel like they belong at work and they need to feel like they belong in the community that they're living and playing in. Thank you, Tiffany. And I know Camille that you work closely with Tiffany and many other community and business members on this very topic. So uh, why don't you continue the conversation? Yeah, so um, exactly like Tiffany said, um, we're, um, actively attracting diverse talent um, and how we welcome new people to the region and creating this community of belonging is obviously hugely important to us. Um, Traverse Connect itself just hosted last week a community-wide summit all about opening the conversation on diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. Um, 
So we recognize that promoting a sense of belonging is, is massively important if we're to attract diverse talent. So we're, we're actively for facilitating and encouraging these discussions amongst our local business leaders and our employers right now. Um, and then secondly, one key example of how we're trying, we're really trying to help newcomers from all backgrounds and abilities to feel welcomed is via our Northern Navigators program. Um, and that's part of our talent attraction program. So our, our Northern Navigators are regional ambassadors who connect one-on-one -on -one with newcomers or potential newcomers to the area. And our navigators themselves have been selected to ensure a rich range of background, knowledge, industry, um, as well as being wonderfully welcoming and friendly. Um, so this personalized concierge service, it's intended to equip the newcomer with knowledge of the area, um, to get them quickly plugged into our network and the community. So newcomers can schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings directly with the Northern Navigator. Um, and it's essentially like having access to an inbuilt friends network upon relocating here. It's all about those roots that Tiffany talked about. It's, a, it's um, ensuring a way that we can lead them to getting connected to the community once they're here. Thank you, Camille. And so, uh, Joe, can you talk a little bit about this sense of belonging? And you had alluded to some of this a little bit earlier, but through the last year of the crisis that we've been living through, uh, what are some examples in your region of how the existing downtown businesses have been supported to keep those special small town um, you know, ecosystems thriving or at least sustaining themselves? through the pandemic and and then also if you would like to share <clears throat> some examples of how your organization welcomes um, newcomers and sort of helps them uh, you know nurture those roots when they first arrive well in innovate market smart zone you know we really are collaborating with all of our regional local and regional edos to really support that um, we work on a campaign with the lscp as a local edo with here we um, it's a love on local campaign and raised over $250,000 for local businesses in that campaign um, to really spur that, you know, dollars back into our community. And we work with many of the other EDOs um, and grant and all the grant application process. And that was one of the most successful grant application and um, for the resiliency dollars that were here. Um, uh, Invest UP was, a, was an amazing partner on that, another EDO partner who really spearheaded that and drove that through and we, and we you know, brought over over $3 million to the, to the UP in terms of pandemic relief and dollars and, and, and through our associations and through all of our, net, our networks, we were able to do that. And um, we also, when welcoming people into the local area, and we really want to give them a sense and the feel of the heritage here. And also the, and the outdoor recreational space and that heritage that we have here, there's this really more, and even though the tenant governor talked more about it, it's, it, it's, it's the outdoor recreational asset, but it's also the feeling when you're in that space to show them and share that with them so they can be in that space and really see um, and see how, what that impact is on them. Um, and additionally to that, I think from diversity and inclusion, and we actually were awarded um, a seven, almost $700,000 grant. It was a matched grant um, from the Department of Natural Resources for an inclusion park right here down in our main uh, area of our city. Um, and so this will be one of the state of the art, um, one of the most advanced parks uh, for, for students in our area and youngsters in our area to come down and and be a part of that full inclusion. I mean, we support that also through all of our initiatives too in outdoor recreation and inclusion in outdoor recreation, as well as um, accessibility to all of our outdoor uh, recreational assets um, for people with limited mobility. Um, another, another amazing opportunity for us to, to really get uh, everyone out into those spaces and, and share those spaces with us. Um, so we're working on a lot of initiatives in that space and it really is a collaboration of all leading up to, um, you know, we're, we're applying now for a build to scale grant here for here in Marquette. Um, that, that grant will allow all the EDO partners to be housed in one location. And it's a, it's a, a building, um, wonderful building in the city of Marquette. It'll be a really welcoming place for them to come. We do our working with co-working spaces and digital co-working platforms and, and co-office spaces and, and, and a really solid incubators and accelerators and online digital information um, you know, for those individuals when they get here. And we have a wonderful organization here in Marquette called Connect Marquette. It's a business professionals organization, um, Connect Marquette. Um, is, is a, a large group of young professionals who really welcome people into the, into the city and, and show them you know, different organizations and groups to be a part of. We have a bunch of wonderful groups at NMU um, as well you know, for the students here. So we have this you know, really well-known um, in, in, in the state for diversity here and, and inclusion. 
Um, so we're, we're super excited about it. The opportunity for us too is also engaging with those um, students at the campus and NMU to learn a lot about this next generation, uh, you know, coming through the university to really engage with them. I think Inventa NMU, our organization, we have students on staff and Innovate Marquette. The Smart Zone is really, you know, working with those students to um, give them those soft skills, but also, you know, to, to mentor them, but them to mentor us. It's a back and forth, you know, so we, we're, you know, business professionals have been in this industry for you know over 15 years as a, as individuals that are that are helping and working with mentoring these students, but we also are being mentored by them. They're the next generation that we're going to be servicing in everything that we do. So we have this really unique opportunity within our organization to be able to um, to be able to collaborate and do that uh, with the university and really understand that next generation here and and start building our minds uh, mindset to to make sure we're servicing them appropriately in the future. Thanks, Joe. It's just such a wide spectrum of um, initiatives and strategies that you're executing and working on. It's exciting opportunities for the next generation as well. So Ryan, we come back to you at the MEDC. You're everywhere. I work with my own counterpart and appreciate him so much on a daily basis. And you know, we've talked about entrepreneurship. We've talked about the high tech space. We've talked about automotive. We talked about mobility, healthcare, critical infrastructure workers. We've talked about the natural beauty in the state. Um, we've talked about sustaining our local businesses and inclusive programs. So, you know, from the MEDC level, could you talk about those roots that are planted by businesses or people who come here um, and relocate here, and you know some of the programming that you offer and the support that you offer to nurture and, and grow those transitions. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you know so far the panelists, especially for this uh, this last question um, that we just went through, obviously the the local and community based organizations are very well suited uh, to make sure that folks that are moving into the regions, into the communities across the state, have uh, the connections they need. They feel welcome. Uh, they're building out their network. They are uh, engaged in the local economy. So great, you know, great answers and great examples that were given um, by the other panelists. You know, one of the first things I mentioned um, earlier in the discussion today was that Michigan across the board has something for everybody. Again, whether it's somebody that's an outdoor enthusiast, somebody um, who you know wants to be in, in more of an urban environment, uh, who likes to be you know involved in uh, any any type of extracurricular activity outside of work. And I think what we rely on heavily. Um, statewide is the is the diverse diversity of experiences to be um, kind of that that uh, factor that reiterates that sense of belonging and emphasizes the ways in which the state and our communities are welcoming. And so what we will continue to do as a statewide economic development organization is listening to our community partners, um, also you know uh, acknowledging and uh, and heightening the awareness uh, of certain you know initiatives or campaigns that they have to offer for effective programming, both for talent and for businesses. And that way, I think we'll position our state long-term for success. A big part of that equation will continue to be recruiting a diverse talent pool and a diverse business pool um, uh, to the communities and regions all across the state. Thank you, Ryan. There's one question that popped into the chat box. I think it was kind of covered, but if anyone has a specific point that they wanna highlight really quickly, that would be great. Can you talk about ways that your organizations are directly supporting some of the people and activities that really feed into the culture of your region? I think that might go back to sort of the second part of the question, which was how did you know we support some of the businesses um, through uh, the pandemic? And, and so I don't know if that might be, um, you know, maybe some of the grant funding we could talk about. Joe, go ahead. Well, you know, we've taken a, in all of our initiative with remote work and all the initiatives we have in the city of Marquette and UP, we have a very solid heritage here. We have a wonderful heritage, heritage here and, you know, and a really great group of local people who are really, you know, stringent on, you know, outdoor recreation and, and preservation and, and on those things. So we really took a lot of time with our local community and the local people here and around the UP. And we're going to continue that effort to ensure um, that we really focus on what they need and really drive. We've got a new poll that we're putting out. It's a three-year poll um, and it really specifically focus on the maintaining that heritage and maintaining that culture that we have here. So it's so important. And that's why people are attracted here, um, you know, by that, by that wonderful culture. Um, so we really have done a lot of effort, um, spent a lot of effort in, in driving, uh, you know, that, that inf information out to ensure that we're, we're, we're taking care of that for our local people. It's very important. 
Thanks, Joe. So I want to thank all of our panelists who have provided so much information on how you execute and are exploring ways to, to, to cultivate uh, that creative and innovative talent to Michigan. And please, uh, to the audience, thank you for attending and also please visit our panelists' websites. And we encourage you to sign up for their newsletters. And I believe that that information will uh, be provided online. And uh, thank you again all for attending.